Our heat team often finds themselves called in to investigate alleged terrorist activities after the more traditional agencies have already had their shot. This was one of those missions. When we were enjoying a little downtime in Puerto Vallarta, thousands of miles away off the coast of Venezuela, one of our comrades in arms was up to his ears in jungle, investigating the activities of a dangerous biochemist who was almost certainly up to no good. unaware of the dramas in South America, my fearless partner, Mike Savage, was dealing with a dangerous opponent of his own. Look out, he's gonna kill you. No way. Get him. Bang! Zoom! Good shot. Smith wants to talk to us. Go. Thank you, Chrissy. How goes the new toy? Well, Chrissy just got nuked. Tommy, Marcos, and Kat got it before lunch. And you? And I only lost a couple of legs. Poor baby. Good afternoon, Ashley. Mike. C5 is sending you on a recon mission. Where to? An island off the coast of Venezuela. Isla Angela. Sounds romantic. It means Eel Island. Still sounds romantic. Dr. Rollo Kaufman has taken up residence there. He's the one who sold biological weapons to both sides during the Iran-Iraq war. Sounds like a neutral guy. We sent an agent to find out what Kaufman is doing. But the agent disappeared, which leads us to believe something is happening on that island. So now it's our turn. C5 wants Heat to find out what Kaufman is up to. He owns a private casino on the island. And he spends part of his time there. I've already faxed the information to Arthur, and he'll make all the travel arrangements. Good hunting. Last time I was in a casino, I lost my shirt. But it wasn't gambling. Wasn't there a pretty croupier involved? No, I was slightly involved. And it was only the shirt. <laughs> this mission did have a couple of perks. A glamorous hotel, a private casino, but unfortunately, all that glitters is not gold, as we would soon find out. I can get used to this place about the next five years. You better slow down there, cowboy. You got the pick in any little room downstairs. This room is reserved for me and Mrs. Largemouth of Houston, Texas. Gracie, how are you doing on the uplink? I'm reading you loud and clear. Everything's set. I hacked into the casino's computer, put your names on the list of the high rollers. I also gave you a credit line of $1 million, so they totally think you're legit. Legit? We're loaded. Hot damn. <laughs> Keep checking on Kaufman. There's bound to be a paper trail. Uh, look for things like chemical supplies, uh, lab equipment, that sort of thing. I've already taken care of it. Oh, and Kat is already on the inside and waiting to hear from you. Good. Oh, um, also, check all the entry visas issued since Kaufman's been here. We're looking for top-notch scientists that he'd need to work for. Will do. Out. Now, I want you and Brett to run down to Kaufman's compound. I want a complete security rundown. He plays for one hour every day, which gives you 45 minutes of clear time starting now. Go. Fancy a game of chemin de fer, Mr. Larchmont? Whatever your little old heart desires, Mrs. Larchmont. <laughs> Rich Texas oil man. <laughs> um, more like Yosemite Sam. Uh, uh, well, might I say that you look like Sam? <laughs> What's it feel like, anyways, to be such a pretty woman? 
what it means is that I get to say no a lot. Well, do you like saying no a lot? No. Do you like hearing it? No. <laughs> then why do you keep asking? Well, the way I figured is one of these days you're going to have to say yes. And, well, I, I just like to be the guy that you say it to. <laughs> Do you read me? Yes, Cat. Mr. Kaufman has arrived. We're on the way. Man, you can't see anything from here. Then I guess we do the old-fashioned way. Hey, it's my turn. No, it's my turn. All right, pick a number between one and ten. Seven. You were so close. It was six. Now, how am I supposed to know it was six? Because I told you. I think we should flip a coin. Yeah, I think you're a sore loser. Are you sure you want to do this solo? I'm sure. Okay, but if you're not back in an hour, I'm coming after you. If I'm not back in an hour, you stay away from that place. I'm serious, man. One hour. While we were off to try our luck, Marcos and Brett were surveilling Kaufman's compound. Reminds me of Granny's old bingo parlor. Yeah, with guns. Champagne? Thank you, kind lady. Middle table, far right. Mm. Definitely French. Which, the wine or Kaufman's companion? Both. Name's Crystal. She looks mighty expensive. That's why she's with him. Ah. What about the moose? Kaufman's bodyguard. Kaufman never leaves the compound except to come here. He plays twice a day for no more than an hour. He's religious about it. Is he good? Not really. He cheats. What does he use, the glasses? No, I looked at them when he went upstairs to get a message. Perfectly kosher. Find out how he does it. Could come in handy. Well, well. He thinks he has me this time. I don't think so. Fifty thousand. Now we'll see. Le petit. Le grand. Dr. Kaufman wins. Order the gentleman a drink. He looks like he can use one. Do you always leave your winnings on the table? Crystal will look after it. Perhaps I can interest you in a little private game. I think your stakes are a little high for me. Oh, money's unimportant. It's the sport that excites me. Oh, well then, what shall we play for? Oh, I'm sure we can find something that excites us both. Must be my lucky day. Here I am sitting with the prettiest girl in the whole place, and she just happens to have a hundred grand in front of her. I'd ask you to run away to South America with me, too, but hell, we're already here. This is not my money. Oh, that's too bad. But I had a hell of a good time spending it together, wouldn't you? Found Kaufman's compound. Just gotta find his lab.
how did the latest blood samples test out? cells are not degenerating like the previous specimens? Good. I don't want to give Dr. Kaufman any more bad news. Marcos, you read me? Marcos. Marcos. Marcos, you read me? What's going on, buddy? Marcos. account from the hotel pharmacy. They ought to do something about their back door because it took me all 35 seconds to get in. Perfume, makeup, body oil. Boy, I like the sound of all that. Down text. Up ah, here it is, contact lens solution. Contact lenses? And here I thought the woman was perfect. Disappointed? More like disillusioned. But what does this have to do with Kaufman's cheating? All the cards are marked with citrus acid extract. Invisible ink. All she has to do is read the cards and signal him. What could be easier? Magic show 101. You'd think Kaufman could come up with something more original than that, though. Why? It's effective. He wins whenever he wants. Well, I'll tell you something now. If I wasn't such an honest engine, I'd get a set of them contact lenses myself for Tuesday night's poker game. And I'd still beat you? I let you win last week. You did not! You... Marcos. I found him a couple of hundred yards south of the compound. I better park the jeep. Are you all right? Yeah, I'll be okay. Cat, get some ice. I'll get the first aid kit. Aspirin. What the hell happened, buddy? I planted the bug. And three of Kaufman's guards, they nailed me. They tried to, right? I would have gotten away, man, but this... Man, this giant showed up. A giant? Yeah, man, he was a giant, and he was big, and he was strong, man. You couldn't take him? No, I couldn't take him. The man used me for handball practice. How the hell did you get out of the compound? I don't know, Mike. I just remember that the lights went out, and the next thing I knew, I was in the middle of the jungle. I hate to say this, pal, but I can't believe you're not dead. While we were checking out visas, we found something very peculiar. There are three men on a flight out of Caracas right now. Coming to see Kaufman? I think so. I'm faxing you their photos right now. Who are they? Uh, the representatives from Iraq, North Korea, and the African dictatorship of Bokelon. Sounds like Kaufman's holding a terrorist convention. Do you think he's up to his old tricks? Trying to sell biological weapons again? Maybe that... Or maybe something even worse. I mean, this guy's a scientific menace. At least we know what he's buying. He's ordered some very specialized chemical compounds from a firm in Los Angeles. Yeah, we thought you might need a little help getting to the compound, so we rerouted the order to your hotel. Nice going, guys. Hey, are these chemicals going to give me three-legged babies one day? Uh, no, but... 
We're kind of hoping it might do something for your hair. Hey, let me tell you something. Grass never grows on a busy street. Uh, here comes your fax. Good luck. Crystal? Who was that man I saw you talking to at the casino? What man? The one with the cowboy hat. I don't know. I detest lies. He looked at some guy. If you're lying to me, I'm going to have to punish you again. Take Crystal to her room so she can think it over. It's incredible. He has taken enough amps to kill four men. And look. You have no idea how pleased I am. Every day you're redefining human limitations. I'm happy you're pleased with me. I need something from you. What? I want to see my sister. Your sister's sick, you know that. Yes, We but... can't take a chance of her infecting you. She won't. I'm strong. I just proved that. It's not the same thing. This project is... I'm not a project. You are too important for us to risk anything of this kind. I haven't seen or heard of her for months. You're getting a weekly report on her progress, aren't you? That's not enough. She is very contagious. As soon as she is... As soon as, as soon as. I want to see my sister now or I leave. All right. I can see how upset you are. I don't want to do interfere with our work. I'll arrange for a flight this week. After the demonstration, I want you to find a new subject. But Montana's becoming a problem. But... I'll start looking immediately. We're picking up the lab. And, Mike, I'm starting a level one search on Montana's sister, and I'll let you know what I find. Make it quick. Over. 3,500 kilometers away. That tiny little camera sends a picture as clear as if it were next door. It is amazing, isn't it? was up to his old tricks again, probably manufacturing some kind of biological weapons. We also knew he was about to sell his merchandise to some very dangerous customers, representatives from three countries known for terrorist activities. In order to find out further details, Brett had bugged one of their hotel rooms. How'd it go? Coughlin and his friends have had their last private moment. Anything yet? No. Apparently I spoke too soon. Uh, John, this is Dr. Kaufman. Uh, we're ready for the demonstration. I'm sending a car for you and the others in 30 minutes. I'll be ready. Looks like we're gonna finally find out what the good doctor is up to. We were finally going to find out exactly what Dr. Kaufman was cooking up in his remote jungle compound. And it was going to be a lot more dangerous than high stakes Chemin de Fer. Van. We're locked on. 
beautiful country, nice day for a drive. Under different circumstances, I'd say I was a pretty lucky guy. In the words of Sophocles, luck isn't on the side of the faint-hearted. Meaning no guts, no luck. Bet you didn't know I knew who Sophocles was, did you? I never doubted it for a moment. Fancy a little hike? You bet. There are boys. Would you looky there? That is one big hombre. Here he is, gentlemen, the perfect soldier. Choose your weapons and kill him if you can. practically anything. He's the world's first legitimate man of steel. Look who owns him. Our man of steel is home alone. You're up, Cat. Just sign here. Montana Bergstrom? What is it? Oh, I think I know your sister, Karen Bergstrom. No, not possible. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Karen. You know, blonde hair, works for Aero Pacific. Have you seen Karen? How is she? I think she's still in the hospital. Why, haven't you spoken to her? Not since June. Dr. Kaufman won't let me see her. Well, come on, let's go. I'll take you to her. Let's go right now. It's impossible. He's paying for a treatment. He will stop if I leave. Well, if your sister's ill, no one's going to stop you from seeing her. You don't know Dr. Kaufman. It's a free world. <laughs> Not for guinea pigs, it's not. Get out of here before he gets back. If you see Karen, please tell her. How much I miss her. I feel sorry for Montana. It's despicable. They're manipulating him like a lab rat. Ashley, 
what exactly are they doing to him? It's called genetic engineering. Most of the experiments I've heard of are intended to restore damaged or unhealthy tissue. Kaufman's gone way beyond that. He's trying to turn Montana into something superhuman. It's really spooky. Unfortunately, technology seems to be evolving faster than people who control it. That's really spooky. We got the DNA results back from the test. Montana has the genetics of a Peterbilt. Yeah, the computer's having a hard time calling him human. It gets worse. His cells are burning up at 10 times the normal rate. If we don't find someone to reverse the process, he'll be dead in less than five years. What about his sister? She died two months ago. Poor Montana. But we may have found the key to get him out. I still feel really bad for him. Yeah, me too. Kaufman is manufacturing supermen to peddle to terrorists. What should we do? Submit him for a Nobel Peace Prize? I had something a little different planned for him. But wasn't this supposed to be just a recon mission? Okay, what would you prefer to do? Go home and write a report? Or finish him off once and for all? <laughs> <laughs> Let's nail him. <laughs> Good. No. He must be in his office. Ashley, Crystal's heading your way. Well, now, somebody ought to lock you up right now, darling, for attempting to inside a riot. Is that a compliment? Definitely. <laughs> well, look at here what the cat just dragged in. Are you sure you can play? Of course I can play. It's only a couple of cards. How hard can it be? You figure we can keep coughing out of your hair for no more than 90 minutes, boys. OK, got it. No problema. Yeah, no problema, right. You haven't met the Incredible Hulk. Hey, a little psychology, and he's on our side, buddy. Dr. Kaufman, where have you been hiding us? Oh, Mrs. Larchmont, a pleasure. I hope you and your husband haven't been losing too much money in my casino. Don't worry about that sort of thing. It's the thrill of the tables that fascinates me. <laughs> really? Hey, Shorty. You messing around with my wife? We were discussing games of chance. What are you looking at? Lyle, stop it. You've been sniffing around my wife like a dog in heat, and I want to see you and your girlfriend outside. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. Please forgive my husband's temper. What's the matter? Don't you think you can take me? I can take you, Mr. Largeman. But I'm entertaining guests right now. And I'm not about to uh, step outside. Well, if you can't come outside like a man, then let's settle it right here. What do you mean? My money against yours. All right, I'll play you a hand. You're on. Scram. Fifty G. I'll cover it. Come on with the card, boy. You're trying my patience. Take it. 
tell you what, dear Shorty, I'm feeling lucky today. How about we double that bet? I'll take it. La Grande. Hey, hey, what do you know? What's that? Get that stick out of there, boy. It's a gambling table. We're betting again. Come on. Cover it for me. <laughs> to get everything off his computer. I'm gonna set a couple of charges. Well, hot dog, would you look at that? Fresh cards. You don't need fresh cards, old man. You need to learn how to play the game. I don't like your style, Mr. Larchmont. Well, frankly, there are four eyes. I don't like them much either, but I'm winning, ain't I? Now I want to play another hand. I want to take more of your money, and I'd like that pretty woman's phone number over there. died two months ago. That's why Kaufman wouldn't let you speak to her. The experiments are killing you, Montana. I'm healthy. I'm strong. No, no, it's not true. Your body's burning up. And if you don't find a cure, you've got five years max. You've got two choices. Stay here or get even. How many guards does Kaufman have out there? Four. One at the gate, and three in the compound. I'll set the charges for remote. I'll tell you there, Kaufman, I really do like this game. What did you say it was called again? <laughs> the game's over, Mr. Larchmont. Already? Next? Keep that ignorant loud mouth here. Okay. Go ahead. Brett and Marcos just ran into Montana. Any casualties? Uh, no, but there is a slight change in plans. Lyle. I'll tell you, lady, I got me a pig, a goat, a horse. Lyle. Time to go. I'll see you back on the ranch. What about the Marines? You don't want to miss the climax, do you? Nice meeting you.
What's going on? There's a fire. Don't be ridiculous. I got the call ten minutes ago. If the lab was on fire, it would have exploded by now. Jorge! Esteban! Jorge! Esteban! Get out of my way! You don't want to go in there. Let go of me! Why didn't you tell my sister is dead? Now, don't be a fool. She's fine. Her treatment's going well. And me? Montana, you are healthy as a horse. Now, clearly our experiment is causing some kind of chemically introduced paranoia. Now, you have to trust me. We'll treat you. This ain't a card game, Kaufman. And nobody buys your bluff. Kill him! No! Stop it, Montana! I'm the only one that can help you! Sorry, Doc. You've been playing God. For what I can see, you're way underqualified. No! Hold on a second, Montana. He may like to see this. Let it rip, Brett. What do you want us to do, Mike? You haven't done anything wrong. Maybe we can take you somewhere. Somewhere where they can help you. No. I've spent the last year with doctors, needles, and tests. I need some time to think. I will sort this out on my own. Let him go. scream bloody murder to the General Assembly. Oh, what a shame we threw a wrench into their game plan. They made Kaufman's project out to be an important humanitarian effort and suggested that you were the terrorist. <laughs> That's a switch. C5 told me to pass on well-deserved thanks. Uh, since everyone's in such a good mood, maybe this is a good time to ask if I can go on the next mission. I'll take it under consideration, Chrissy. Goodbye. Can you imagine Bokla with an army of Montanas? Forget an army. I wouldn't want to go up against him again. Is Kaufman standing trial? On 11 counts. We sent his research directly to the World Health Organization. I love a happy ending. Kaufman tried to design the perfect killing machine, but he overlooked one thing. Oh, yeah? What's that? Montana's soul. Yeah, thank God for that. <laughs> Gamblers Anonymous. Listen to this. A little snippet on page five reads thus. Superman saves family of four. An identified man rescued a family of four just outside of Caracas when their car overturned on the freeway. Montana. And there's more. It goes on to say that the stranger lifted the overturned automobile, releasing the trapped family only seconds before the car actually exploded. <laughs> I'm really glad you let him go. I am too. Hey, thanks. Oh, boy. Hey, wait a minute. Anybody for a game of poker? Yeah. No way. You cheat. I do not cheat. You do too. I believe her. Well, you help me. I did not.
Let me help you, please. Uh. Careful. Okay. I'll bring the ambulance. Wait one second. Bring the ambulance. Now. Okay. Most of our cases involve high-level terrorists of one sort or another. But occasionally, a more garden-variety criminal steps on the wrong toes, and the HEAT team is asked to make sure justice is done. This time, a baby-stealing doctor was our target, and I, for one, was determined to put the doctor where he belonged, behind bars. One more pitch to strike him out. I'm throwing this Brooklyn Dodgers special knuckleball spitball with a twist. No human being's ever hit it. It's gonna drop right in front of the plate. Watch this. Whoa! Nice pitch, Valenzuela. The wind must have shifted. Brett, I need you too. Come on. Are you sure it's Monroe? Kat spoke to a waiter at the Malia who ID'd his photo. He comes in nearly every afternoon. Three days ago, he broke into Ambassador Drake's home, drugged his pregnant daughter, induced labor, and took the baby. Maggie? Maggie Drake? I'm so sorry. I know how close you and the Ambassador are. That's why I'm asking you to help me on this one. I know baby stealing isn't your usual kind of assignment, but damn it, this girl is like my own daughter. Is there any reason why the local authorities aren't working on this? Well, they have no hard evidence yet. But by the time they do, Maggie's baby will be long gone. Now get Monroe back to the States where he's already under indictment. Get his records and recover as many of the other babies as possible. I don't understand. Why wouldn't they wait till the babies are born before they kidnap them? Babies already born are more easily traced. Birthmarks are recorded, footprints and photographs are taken. Kidnapping the mother and forcing her into labor makes it much harder to find the child later. Officially, the child doesn't even exist. And I suppose there's a lot of money in this, too. A fortune. A couple can wait years to adopt through legal channels. When people are desperate, they'll pay anything. We started looking for a lead on Dr. Monroe. Meanwhile, down the beach, two women with whom we would soon become intimately acquainted were just beginning their vacation. Well, this is just what we needed. I don't know. I keep thinking about my patients at the trauma center and free clinic. I just got up and left them. It's just a lousy two weeks. You know, they can live without you. Just relax. Don't you ever think about work? Yeah. And I'm making a new resolution. I am not going to think about work unless I'm there. All right. Are you sure that's Dr. Monroe? Yeah, that's definitely him. I wasn't standing more than 10 feet away from him. Is he still there? Yeah, don't worry. He hasn't even gotten his drink yet. Have you heard from Sam? Oh. I don't know why I wear this damn thing anymore. It's just such a farce. I could try calling him. We're beyond that stage now. You know, when you get to the point where you're, you know, you're just lying and destroying each other, there's nothing left to say. You'd think a federal prosecutor could cut a deal and move on with her life. Good morning, Maria. How are you? Oh, great, Dr. Monroe. Hey, I going? think he's got a girlfriend. Or an accomplice, maybe. What would you like to drink, Maria? Oh, whatever you're having is fine. Wow. What have we here? What? Do we move on? Oh, I should have guessed. Do we do? Keep your mind on your work. Stop drooling. Enough of the sad stuff. No more talk of work or husbands. 
What husband? Oh, that's your fault. You could have him crawling all over you if you wanted. I'm too busy to have a relationship right now. You are not too busy right now. And I am going to find you a boyfriend. What? Mm-hmm. It's a little vacation romance. I don't think so. No strings. Mm. And it's really what you need. Oh, no, I think it's what you need. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm still a married woman right now. At least on paper, anyway. Stace? It's him. Who? Don't look. How am I supposed to know who it is if you're not letting me look? Remember the baby selling case I was working on last year? The guy who skipped bail. He's sitting right over there. Careful. It's the blue shirt. I beg the judge not to give him bail. No, 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 no. I'll take it alone. Okay, Brett, stand by. We're ready, boss. Come on, we gotta follow him. I gotta nail this scumbag. Monroe's heading up front. Pick him up there. No, I'll explain later. Come on. Come on, let's go. They're entering a burgundy four-door sedan. Monroe and a female passenger. Probably some poor. Pulling out, making a U-turn, and heading north. Just past us. Okay, stick with him, buddy. Activating the video. Hey, watch out! Hey, you guys are falling behind. Those women, they look like they're following Monroe. Those were the ones that you had your eye on. They were there sitting right next to me. They did that on purpose. Mike, did you see that? Yes. Get around them. I'm trying to. They're taking a lot of risks to keep us back here. Whatever Monroe's paying them, it isn't enough. Are you still with them? Don't worry, we're still on them. What is going on? Our doctor may have some friends running interference for him. We had picked up Dr. Monroe, but we lost him because of our two mysterious motorcyclists. someday, especially if I'll be traveling with you. Oh, oh. What happened to your bike? I was negligent. Ran out of gas. Damn it! We had him. Thanks.
We couldn't get close enough to read the other license plate. They were like Top Gun on bikes. Every time I saw an opening, boom, one of them closed it off. Are you sure they had California plates? Positive. Chrissy, how long before you get an ID? Uh, not long, just a few minutes. We still need to figure out how Monroe chooses his victims. Obviously, he needs healthy babies. Inducing labor prematurely would be too dangerous. So he has to kidnap the women when they're almost due. How on earth does he know when these women are due to give birth? When we know that, Chrissy, I've analyzed the victims' records. They don't have the same doctors. They don't go to the same hospitals and clinics. They have nothing in common to indicate that someone is feeding Monroe the medical records. The only thing they do have in common is they are all Caucasian and they are all upper class. So what does that tell us? Only that Caucasian babies are in demand, which we already knew. Wealthy parents would indicate good prenatal care. Oh, here we go. Linda Davidson, MD, Los Angeles, California. Here's your easy rider. I'm a doctor. Makes sense. Monroe would need other medical personnel if he's going to expand his operation. They might both be doctors. Not necessarily. Those plates might be fake, for all we know. Check her out anyways, Chrissy. See if she has anything to do with any of the victims, here or in the United States. She might be our link. Let's move on this guy. Hello? Ah, oh, Hans dear. Yes, yes, it went perfectly. You can pick the baby up at any time. We'll take the passport photos and you'll be on your way. Three days. Uh, yes, of course. Um, look, um, we will have another baby by then, if you'd like to save yourself a trip. This one? $125,000. Oh, she's an exceptional child. Worth far more. Mother's medical history is perfect. Hans, dear, you're not my only broker. Hmm? Look, I do this as a courtesy to you out of our long association. Then we have a deal. Good, good, excellent. See you then. So, what have you got? There are three possibilities. Excellent. Now, we have to move quickly. Young Kruger already has another buyer. The locals are going to start taking precautions when they realize what's happening here. It's going to become more difficult. Well, we'll do two, three at the most, and then move on. By the time they are on our trail, we will be long gone. Okay, so we'll walk it through just one more time. Remember the marks, remember the spacing. Shouldn't we notify the local authorities? No. Uh, they could help us look, there's only two of us. Extradition is not a sure thing here. And with the kind of money he has, he'll have access to the best lawyers. And if he's paying someone off, calling attention to ourselves will do us more harm than good. We'll end up the hunted ones. So what are we gonna do? Well, we know this end of his route. So we stake out that road tomorrow and every day until he comes back into town. And as soon as we know where he is, I'll find a way to get him back to the States. How are you gonna do that? I'll kidnap the man and drag him back myself if I have to. So much for not thinking about work. There they are, Arthur. Get them. Buenos dias, ladies. Oh, hi. Um, I would like a pina colada, please. And what do you want? Uh, uh, no, no, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not the waiter. I'm, I'm Arthur Small, director of the fashion show that we're rehearsing here. Anyway, I do hope you enjoy the rest of your stay here. Well, actually, we're not staying at this hotel. No. Oh. Stall them for as long as you can. Keep team report to me immediately at the walkway. Just occurred to me, but um, would you would you care to be in the fashion show? <laughs> <laughs> you want us to be in the fashion show? Yes, yes, that's the general idea. <laughs> Thank you very much, but we have some rather pressing business. Over there. Well, at least if I can't persuade you, let me buy you a drink, please. No, really, we have to be going. 
well, any time that you want to come along and... Uh... Tell them, wait till they're alone and then bring them in. You got it. Let's go. abducted and brought here at gunpoint? Look, we're, um, tourists. We're here on vacation, and we don't have any money. Then why were you following Dr. Monroe? And where did he go? Monroe? What do you know about Monroe? Just answer the question. And I'd like to see your identification. I have no intention of telling you or showing you anything at all. And th are these friends of yours? Exactly who are you? I can assure you that it will be in your best interest to tell us where you were yesterday. Although it's none of your damn business, it looks like we're outnumbered, so I don't have much of a choice, do I? Not really. I'm a federal attorney in Los Angeles, and I am the prosecutor on a very important baby-stealing case against Dr. Monroe when he skipped out on his bail of $2 million. And I got quite a shock when I saw him in the same bar that we were in yesterday. So when he got up to leave, we followed him. Unfortunately, he got away because I ran out of gas. Tough luck. Well, to tell you the truth, I don't like your story. I don't like your bikes, but I'll tell you, those outfits definitely work. I'm still waiting for those identifications. Anything, if it'll satisfy your peculiar mind and get us out of here. Stacy Harley, and she is a federal attorney. Satisfied? Come on, you must have studied more than a lot to be able to handle yourself like that. The woman came at me like a hurricane, Mike, and Dr. Davidson. Well, I guess it's good to have you around for after she beats up on people. What were you expecting us to do? Hang around and wait for your thugs to come and mug us? All right, take it easy. It looked as if you were involved with Dr. Monroe and his baby scam. We were on to him, and it appeared like you were running interference on the bikes. You cut us right out of the chase and nearly brought us to a nasty end. Do you know anything that would give us a lead on Monroe? You haven't told us who you are. And we're not going to. All you need to know is that we're after him. Are you going to cooperate with us or not? He was caught in Los Angeles when the police discovered that all of the victims had been using hospitals that were owned by the same company. So Monroe had infiltrated the computer records, knew who was going to give birth and when, he knew where they lived, everything. We've already tried that. I can't find a link anywhere. All the doctors are different, and all the hospitals are under separate management. What about insurance? We're checking that now. Mike, will you see if we've got a lead? Yeah. Acapulco Heat Beach Fashions. Chrissy, did you get anywhere with that insurance angle? We need a lead. Well, there is a sort of pattern, but I can't be definite about it yet. Okay, as soon as you know. And Chrissy, I want you to check out a Stacy Harley. She's a federal prosecutor in Los Angeles. Okay, I'm right on that. It shouldn't take too long. Oh, uh, before you hang up, I got the report back on Dr. Davidson. Yeah. Excellent medical reputation. Apparently a model citizen. Okay. Sorry about our unorthodox methods. I hope you understand. We'll get Monroe, I'm sure of it. Marcos, would you please drive these ladies back to their hotel or wherever else they might like to go? Hotel? Are you crazy? We have to work on this together. I'm sorry, it's out of the question. I have spent two years of my life on this case. Monroe is in this town, and I am going to nail him whether you like it or not. And when Monroe gets caught, he gets returned to me for trial. So we either work on this together, or I'm going out and I'm getting him on my own. 
And she means it. I'll have a word with him alone. Mike? Mike, Holly is his prosecutor. She knows him better than anybody else. Listen, if we work too closely with these women, we're going to have to give up our cover. I'm totally against it. If we don't pool our resources, there are going to be loose cannons out there. Harley is a federal prosecutor. She's no fool, and neither is the doctor. They're going to ask a lot of questions, and sooner or later, somebody's going to blow it. Hey, guys, I think you should take a look at this. Well, it may have taken a while, but we have definitely hit it. Monroe's victims, they're all insured by the same company. Different agents, but the same insurance company. He obviously infiltrated their computer and had access to all their medical records. Each time a woman claimed for medical services, Monroe had an updated progress report on them. Did you get any information on the women that are expected in the next few weeks? Ah, I got better than that. I've got information on three that are due in the next five days. Five days? We're going to be awful thin on the ground if we have to cover three women at the same time. Mike, this is where we can use Stacy and her friend to our advantage. You can't take advantage of a federal prosecutor. We can feed them just as much information as they need to know. I'm not crazy about it. Look, Mike, we really don't have any choice. Who are these people? Good question. That cat woman came at us with a gun. She really knew what she was doing. They obviously mean business. Do you think Monroe took a baby from one of them? No, I doubt it. No. Whoever these people are, though, they're not amateurs. Hello. Hi. I'm Tommy. Listen, I just wanted to say it is really terrific to meet such beautiful and talented women. I wish we could return the compliment. It'd be a lot easier if we knew who you were. Ask Mike and Ashley. Say, listen, I don't know if you'd mind, Doc, but I think I hurt my shoulder working out, you know, punching the bag. And I was wondering if you could, you know, take a look at it. Original. Sure. Why not? <clears throat> so, uh, Brett and Marcos aren't real happy with you guys. How'd you learn to dent pride like that? Ed Parker. I started when I was seven, and I studied with him until he died. Really? <laughs> oh, no wonder. Well, what do you think? Maybe you and I could get together, and we could, I don't know, maybe you could teach me a couple tricks. <laughs> well, that would depend on what kind of tricks you want to learn. Ow! You do realize here that my friend is on vacation, and if you do need a medical exam, maybe you ought to make an appointment. Yeah, well... Send me a bill. You're on the button about the insurance. All the women are insured by the same company. In fact, three of the women with that company are due to give birth in the next five days. Our best bet is going to be to stick with them like glue. If we try to warn the women or tell the police, their habits will change. Monroe will get suspicious and leave town. I don't care who you are or what you are or how you get your information, but I am determined to get Monroe too. So I think it's really wise if we work on this together. You know I can take care of myself. And Linda here, she's pretty tough with a tire iron. Mike and I have agreed that it will benefit all of us if we combine our search for Monroe. That's great. Yeah. So, Doctor, why don't you go over this list, pick out the girl you think is most likely to have her baby first. It's like trying to pick the winning number in the lottery. All you can do is your best. Let's go for this one tomorrow morning. Her routine is so predictable, it should be easy. <laughs> now, you've got everything you need? Yes, I'm ready. Good. I'll bring her in about 11. Perfect. Good. Oh, uh, let's hope she doesn't have the baby tonight, eh? <laughs> Mm -hmm. okay. You know 
that is the thing these days. You get pregnant, and then you get married. You gonna get married? <laughs> Not like that. You better keep your mind on business. <laughs> Where does she put it all? Yes. Anything? Uh, nothing new except she's on her third helping. Man, I'm telling you, if Monroe grabs her, he's gonna be in for a shock. She's probably not pregnant at all. <laughs> well, you better make sure she's not grabbed. Yeah, yeah. Having staked out the pregnant women likely to be Dr. Monroe's next victims, we decided that one of them, Cheryl Edwards, was his most likely target. Cheryl was a creature of habit, and as such, easy to intercept. Except for one thing, we got to Cheryl first, and Chrissy got to have her first taste of motherhood. Someone's got Chrissy in the red car. Go after her. Tell the others. Fine for a couple hours. Let's go. How on earth did they grab her? How the hell do I know? Let's get going.
and let us out of here, or I'll kill her. Is it really worth dying for? We don't want you, we want Monroe. So you're gonna tell me where he is, and you're gonna put the gun down, or I'm gonna kill you right now. Keep back, I'm warning you. I'm a doctor. I'm gonna help that girl. If you want to stop me, you're gonna have to shoot me. I'm warning you! No, stay back! No! No! Help me put her in the car. How is she? Oh, oh, oh. She's gonna be okay. Listen, we gotta put her in the taxi. Assured that Chrissy was all right, we left her with Marcos and the female dynamic duo and went on to take care of business with Dr. Monroe. Where have you been? And where's John? An accident. What sort of an accident? Same one you will have if you make one move. How is she? The mother's doing just fine, and you are the proud father of a pillow, which is what saved her life. It was just a flesh wound. Yeah. <laughs> Ow. You've been a really rotten guy, Monroe. And my bet would be that you're going to get life sentence without the possibility of parole. What about you, Ash? I think he'll get the gas chamber. That's right, there was the lady in Pasadena who died when he skipped bail. Nasty business, that. What are you talking about? No one died. You should keep up with the news, pal. She never recovered from the shock after losing her child. Have you guys come up with anything? No, nothing. It's just property info and legit accounts. I think we're wasting our time. I agree. Let's take him in. Hey, just, just, just a minute. Look, if you're not, if you're not with the FBI or the CIA, can we make a deal? What would you have in mind? How much do you want? Money's not our interest. Tell them what we want, Ash. We want all the locations of every single child you've ever stolen, and that includes the ones you took in the United States. Plus a list of all your brokers including the ones overseas, before we can possibly make any kind of deal. If I give you this information, will you promise I'll go free? I'll have to check with my team. Well? We've got a deal. Once we got the information we needed from Dr. Monroe, we saw him safely onto a private plane. He thought he was getting away, but we had one more surprise in store for the good doctor. Next time he made a deal, he'd be sure to read the fine print. Thank you. Thank you. You're right, we did have a deal. There's only one small problem. Problem? What problem? She wasn't in on the deal. Welcome to the United States of America, Dr. Monroe. I have a feeling that this time you won't be getting bail. Thanks.
Uh, you'll be happy to hear that most of Monroe's overseas brokers have been arrested. And now even better news. Almost all of the stolen babies have been located and recovered. Ambassador Drake's daughter asked me to thank my friends personally for helping to get her baby back. And the same goes for her father. We have good leads and the rest. So I'm anticipating almost 100% recovery of the children. There is one more thing you should know. Stacy Harley was right. Dr. Monroe was denied bail. Those women were really something, huh? Both of them. They were way out of our league, man. I don't know, a doctor and a lawyer. But I can dream, can I? You certainly can, Tommy. <laughs> Besides, it's nice to have really intelligent women around. How would you know? By comparison. <laughs> oh, Tommy. Stacy asked me to give you this. It's a doctor bill. Okay. <laughs> a medical bill for 150 bucks. Oh, man. I can't believe she'd do that. You know, she looked at my shoulder for less than a minute. Oh, Tommy, I'm sorry. It's a good looking shoulder. <laughs>